Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here and welcome to another very exciting tutorial. Today, we're gonna be taking some typewriter keys and creating some cool custom effects. Now, in this example, we have some of the keys flipping over to reveal the title. And of course, it's all 3D. We're gonna be using our plugin Element 3D inside of Adobe After Effects along with the free typewriter model pack that you can download right now. So let me just show you a couple of these different examples. The nice thing about this effect is that once you set it up, it's really easy to customize the way it animates. Now, even though Element 3D only has five groups, we're gonna be using an all new technique to be able to write whatever you want and use as many characters as you want. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Let's create a new composition. We'll call this title, hit okay, and let's create a new solid. And we'll call this E3D. Then we'll choose effect video copilot element. Then we'll jump into the scene setup. And we're gonna come over here to the model browser and I've installed the typewriter pack. We'll load that up. And we also have some models like the typewriter down here. So we can load that up and uh, we can turn off draft textures and uh, see that in a little bit better quality. So really high resolution model and uh, very cool. You could turn the paper off here and uh, you know load it into your scene. Now we've also included a couple of other objects that have different skins. So basically these characters have all these sub characters as well. And some of these other ones actually just have the characters by themselves. And that way you can use them as a title treatment or whatever. Okay, that's what's included in the typewriter pack. Let me go ahead, delete that and remove the unused materials. So that's just gonna clear our scene out. So now I have a clean project. So let's spell out the word type, T, Y, P, and E. Now I've added the four objects into my scene. Now currently there are four different materials. What I wanna do is unify all of the materials into one material. So the way I'm gonna do that is right click on one of the materials and let's choose apply to all. And that's gonna apply this material to all the objects in our scene. Then we'll remove the unused materials, which will delete all of the extras. So now we only have a single material that we need to manage. The one thing that we've also included is some different skins. So in this case, I wanna change the skin from the skin with the sub characters and add the skin with the nice big bold letters. So what I'll do is I'll click on the material, load up the diffuse, now, instead of using the default texture, I'm gonna switch it out. So we're gonna click on the texture and now we can load a different one. There's one called Typewriter Keys Diffuse Big and you can see there's some big characters on each of the keys. We've also included the version that doesn't have anything on it. So you can actually open that up in Photoshop and then add your own font or add your own characters as well. So we'll go and hit open and that's gonna swap it out. So now look at our characters, nice bold, lettering. So the other thing I want to check out is uh, maybe play around with some of the settings. So we can scroll down here and maybe turn up the shininess. So that's going to just increase the specular highlight. Let's see, turn that up a touch. Now I also want to change the reflectivity by swapping out the environment map as well. So we'll click on that and let's load say the studio environment and we'll bring the saturation down and maybe Turn up the contrast and lower the gamma. So it's nice and contrasted, there we go. So that creates a cool reflection. Now our normal bump is maybe a little high as well. So let's go up here, turn the bump amount down. Just a touch there. So that's looking pretty good. So let's hit okay. Now let's jump into group one, go to the particle look, and we're gonna rotate the particle to face the camera. So let's turn the X rotation up to 90 degrees. Okay. Now here's the cool trick to getting these characters to spell out the word correctly. Let's go to the particle replicator and set the replicator shape to a 3D grid. And then we're going to set the Y and Z down to one. 
And right here we can see we have three particles, but the word that we picked actually has four. So we'll set it to four, and we'll scale the shape up a little bit, and maybe come down to the particle look, and scale the size of the objects down. Now currently the particles are being generated randomly, so what I want to do is change the particle order from random to backwards, and that's going to spell out our word correctly. Now the reason backwards works instead of forwards is because when you add the objects into your scene, they add to the top of the stack, so we actually want them to be in reverse order. Alright, so we've got our word here, now let's go and create a camera, 35 millimeter. hit OK, and uh, here we can fly around here. We've got a nice 3D object. Let's come over here to the project. I've got a, just a background image that we can use. All right, so this is looking pretty good, but let's see if we can play around with the lighting a little bit. Now, we can add some of our own lights, or we can go down to the Render Settings and open up the Lighting tab, and we can actually turn on some of the preset lighting. So we can turn on, say, the dramatic lighting and uh, you know, zoom in here. And then we can play around. We can maybe tweak the additional lighting rotation. So we can kind of rotate this a bit, get some different uh, looks. So that's looking pretty cool. We could even try some of these other presets like cinema and, uh, you know, just keep tweaking them until we find a nice look. Once you're happy with the lighting, we can then add additional lighting. So we could add, say, a point light and uh, hit OK and just kind of use this as the light in front, maybe just lower the brightness a touch. Alright, so that's just going to make it a little bit easier to read. Now let's add another solid, maybe like a gold solid, and let's set the transfer mode to screen, and then we're going to add just an ellipse mask around maybe the top side. Then hit F, and we're going to feather it out a lot. Let me just move it over a bit. And this will just add a little bit of atmosphere. I'm also going to add an adjustment layer with some curves and maybe a tent effect. Tent is at the bottom there. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Maybe we'll take the background layer and add a curves adjustment as well and just darken it down a bit. So this is looking pretty good, but what about editing or animating this? Well, let's jump back into Element 3D Scene Setup, and let's talk about a couple of other things that you may want to do. Now, let's say I want to switch the word. Well, what you can do is come over here, remove all the objects, then we'll come back to the typewriter pack, and we'll just pick a different word, or A, B, C, D, E, F, right? And again, we can right-click on that same keys material and choose Apply to All and that'll swap it out, and then we can just remove the unused materials again. So now we've got A, B, C, D, E, F. So now, instead of four characters, we have six characters. So we'll turn it to six and scale the shape up a bit. And that's how we can kind of accommodate any word that we want. Now, if we jump back into the scene setup, we can talk about the animation. So right now, all the characters are on group one, but I want to animate them with the help of the animation engine. So I'm just going to turn on group 2 for all of the characters. There we go. Now that I have group 1 set up, I can actually go to the group utilities, open up the copy paste function, copy the settings, then go to group 2 and paste the settings. So now group 1 and group 2 are identical, so we have two copies basically. But I'm going to turn on the animation engine. So we'll come down here, enable it, and this is going to animate group 1 to group 2. So let me just show you how this works. All you need to worry about is the animation percentage. So we'll turn that on, move forward like 50 frames, and turn it up to 100%. So if we hit U, we can see those two keyframes. Now in order to see the animation, all we have to do is go to group 1, and make some changes to the settings. So let's go down to the particle look and maybe adjust the Z rotation. So let's just crank this up a bit. And now if we scrub through the video, we can see that we get this cool animation. Now we can do some other stuff like maybe move the particle replicator position. So let's maybe 
move the position back in Z space. So watch this. You know, we can maybe move it forward towards the camera. And so now they're going to fly past the camera into place. So this is a really cool way to create some custom animations. Now what makes this so simple is that we're just animating between group one and group two. So any differences or changes between the two groups will simply animate together. So let's come down to the animation engine and talk about some of the settings here. So we have the main setting for smoothness. Now if we turn it down, you can see we're going to get a much choppier animation. Now if we turn it up, we're going to get a much smoother movement. We can also come down to the directional options and switch it to say 180 degrees and it'll animate from right to left. So we could come in here. We could even turn on the motion blur for the layer and also for the comp and we can see that uh, you know flying in a little bit better. There we go. Now another fun thing we could do is on group one let's go to the particle look and turn up random rotation. So check this out. So now the characters have some nice random rotation as they come flying in. Alright so this is looking really nice. Uh, you know we could do some other stuff like turn on depth of field. So we could hit AA for the camera, turn on depth of field and maybe crank up the aperture and then uh, set the focus distance to maybe 1200. And this is just going to help kind of create some more dramatic uh, looks with the uh, depth of field turned on. Now in this example we're using pretty much the same technique to draw on the alphabet. I set the particle count to 25 since that's a square number and I'm using the replicator shape of a plane instead of the 3D grid to create an entire field of particles. The only difference is I've actually set the animation type to shape order instead of directional which will draw them on in the correct order. Now you may not believe it but I recently did something nice for my wife and I made her a little charm bracelet. And uh, you know I gave her a thumb drive with it and the project file. She had to download the After Effects trial to look at it. But let me show you what's cool about this. So it's got the word love and it kind of repeats around in a circle. So what I've done here is I set the replicator shape to a ring but how did I create the divider between the words. Well, if we jump into the scene setup, basically I created one character that's basically blank and then we have L, O, V, E and then the blank character. So it's using the same object basically. But the other thing you'll notice is that it's a different size than the other particles. So let me just turn off the depth of field and you can see that it's actually the same thing but it's a different size. So what I did is I actually clicked on the object and I changed the scale from 100% to 75% and what that does is affects just this one particle and that way you can create some cool variable patterns like another example is let's say I come in here and I wanted to make the A a little bit larger than the rest of the characters well let's jump into the scene setup go down to the A and let's set the scale to like 115 and then if we hit OK, that character is going to be bigger than the other characters. So it's just a cool way to create some variation in the particles. Now let's say I want to have a space in between two words. Well what we could do is go into the scene setup. Let's come down here to the C key and let's say set the scale of it to zero. So now if we hit OK, we're going to have an empty slot there. So that's a perfect way to create a space between two words without affecting the way that it renders. All right, guys, my name is Andrew Kramer. Be sure to check out the site, videocopilot.net, and we'll see you next time.